data center cooling. I mean, <laughs> we have got, you know, the amount of watts we're putting into uh, trays, racks, fleets, and data centers is, mm -hmm. is insane. I think we're going from, what, 3% of the world's energy uh, taken up by data centers to 12 <laughs> in, in five years. Yeah. Uh, so it seems like we need to be able to, 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 to cool these as well. Yep. I'm going to call it quantum cooling to make it more interesting. Yeah, no, there we go. We can, <laughs> no, that's, that's perfectly legal. Call it whatever you want. We're analysts. We can create a new category. So, so here's the setup. Um, you know, the average server, you know, I shouldn't say the average server, but you know, if you have a dual socket server with a couple of GPUs, you're on the order of two kilowatts per server, right? So that's in 21 of those in a, in a rack, um, which you're probably not gonna be able to do because you, you might not have the power budget for that rack. You're consuming a lot of power. When you look at some of these platforms out there that are AI designed, um, you're upwards of you know four kilowatts per server. Uh, I mean, the numbers are staggering. And um, you're right. You're right, Pat. You know, a couple of years ago, it was one percent of the the world's uh, power consumption was consumed by data centers. That was the size of Australia. Uh, it's now three percent, and it's projected to go well above ten percent. Um, that's crazy. And when I say the size of Australia, I mean the energy consumption of Australia. Um, it's crazy, and it's it's untenable. We can't continue to manage this. Um, and so. And, and oh, and here's part two to that, right? While air, you know, physically air can always cool, right? The amount of space and the amount of power you need to, to get fans and to get enough space for that heat to dissipate becomes makes air untenable as well over the next uh, over the next generation or two of, of server platforms. You just can't cool these the way um, the way they need to be cooled. That's part one. Part two, the infrastructure that sits in data centers today for dedicated to cooling for HVAC, 40% of the power budget. So you're wasting, as a data center operator, a data center architect, you're wasting half your power budget just on cooling alone, yeah. right? Enter liquid cooling. And I think AI is and other kind of high-end workloads that require, you know, kind of different kinds of cooling technologies is going to be the, the kind of killer app, if you will, for liquid cooling. Um, but it's going to bring in the um, it's going to bring it in in mass. A lot of different types of cooling out there. There's you know direct to chip. There's um, uh, 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 direct to chip immersive. There is uh, full immersive, single phase, dual phase. All of these different types of technologies out there. Um, every OEM has its own approach to this. You know Tim Shed. Uh, I shouldn't say a friend. He's by someone I've spoken to quite a bit at Dell. Um, really, really um, forward thinking on this, has his own thoughts. Folks at Lenovo have their own thoughts and have done some really good work. HPE acquired a lot of good cooling technologies from Cray and SGI, um, a lot of good work that's been put in there. So there's a lot of movement going on and a lot of players out there. What needs to happen is those standards from ASHRAE, from, uh, from OP, uh, OCP and from others, really need to start to coalesce around, not necessarily on OEM level implementations, but how you deploy cooling en masse across the data center um, with the ability to plug in HPE, Dell, Lenovo, Supermicro, whoever, and not be concerned about proprietary kind of approaches. And I think we're gonna get there, but it's gonna be big. And I think 2024 is the year we start to see this become you know, less about what the guys with the hard hats and the uh, in the in the pocket protectors talk about, and more, you know, what the kind of the cool kids in the thing in, in the in the knocks in the the data center rooms. I think they're going to start talking about this more and more over the next uh, over the next year. Yeah, you know, anytime you get into stuff like liquid cool <laughs> liquid cooling, uh, you know, that was always the signal to me that you know we're we're, we're hitting a threshold. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, this may be way off topic here, but if, so this all gets back to the slowdown in Moore's law, which meant we had to change some things, which, which meant we needed to get more to accelerated computing mm -hmm. where, you know, 
is driving AI and, and by the way, accelerated computing, you know, we use ASICs for music and video codecs too. Um, and, and now we're getting into this systems of systems design where you have uh, a synopsis buying ANSYS and you have cadence that is, that is doing all these simulation tools to, to where the integrated systems need to go all the way from the IP block on a chip all the way to the fluid dynamics of the data center and how it's laid out. Yep. And you can imagine AWS doing this. You can imagine um, also Tesla uh, Automotive doing that, you know, th this very linked design literally from the physical characteristics of the car all the way to um, uh, the IP block and, and everything in between the SOC, the chip, uh, everything. So yeah, we're, uh, we're hitting, we're slowing down. Paul, hurry that quantum up. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, we, we're hitting a wall big time in, uh, in conventional. Well, the, yeah, conventional the interesting computing. thing is that AI, of course, is a huge consumer of, uh, electricity and energy and everything. And, but, uh, they're, they're doing a lot of work with AI to manage and optimize the data centers and the, the energy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, they have, um, I think it's it, it's funny, you know, but because I've always thought of and I look, I've worked in IT, I, I and and these concerns were always somebody else's problem, right? I would have a line item in my budget that was operational, and it was facilities, power, you know, kind of all that stuff. I mean, I never really kind of thought about it. IT executives are starting to get measured on this, um, and it's not somebody else's problem anymore. It's it's uh, you know it's it is IT's problem now. And they have to figure out an AI can optimize your power consumption um, across the data center and kind of utilization. However, um, thanks, you know, this Mike. is real time fan. I mean, we're uh, we're doing this live. Thanks, Mike. Yeah. And in fact, uh, if you look at what uh, Meta, some of the placements of their data centers is very close to the uh, uh, to the Arctic Circle. Yeah. You know, and there's been a lot of experimentation too, right? I remember Azure was uh, dropping data centers down into the, uh, down into the ocean. And I mean, there are all these different approaches to how you cool. Um, but the fact of the matter is this is, I think this is going to be a really fun, um, I don't know if market's the right word to talk, to call this, but really fun segment to follow over the next year. Cause, and there are a lot of really budding startups that are coming up with some really cool solutions. So I'll be covering those in a blog over the yeah. next week.